friends. Hello. Hi. How are you? I hope you guys are having an amazing 4th of July. You're in America. Happy 4th. If you're not, happy Thursday. Um, so to, or Wednesday or it's Friday. I don't know. Um, I don't know where you live. So today's video, we are going to be doing a, just like a really simple, this is pretty laid back and chill. That's why we're in the chill spot. Um, I wanted to just talk to you guys about some certain like tips and tricks that I think are beneficial to know when starting a YouTube channel and when having a YouTube channel. This is completely all my opinion and my experience on YouTube. I did a video a while back where people asked me questions about like YouTube being a YouTuber, like what it's like to make content, but I thought it would be interesting to make a video just kind of talking about things that I experienced when starting my channel. I've been getting a lot of, I get, I get tons of comments and messages and DMs of people saying that they want to start YouTube channels, but they don't know how, or they want tricks and tips. So these are mine. Um, so this is basically, that's what this is going to be. Just really chilled, relaxed. I had my tips in my head and then I asked you guys on Instagram because I was like, well, maybe there's some like specific questions questions I can answer that I didn't cover my tips. So I'm first going to go through the Instagram questions and just see what you guys asked and maybe answer a couple questions and then go through like my personal what I thought of tips. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, <laughs> this is a really good question and the first question is how do you get over being camera shy? I think the best way to get over being uncomfortable in front of the camera, this is gonna sound stupid and obvious, but like it's to just film yourself a lot. Like I think to be a YouTuber, you obviously, and to like do YouTube, even if it's just a hobby, even if it's just for fun, you have to be really comfortable, obviously sitting in front of a camera and talking to yourself. So I think the best way to do that would be to film yourself a lot. And when I first started out, I was filming, I probably filmed like, it's so I filmed so many videos that I never uploaded and it was just to like practice speaking it was to practice talking and know that your first YouTube video probably not gonna be perfect um, it's probably not gonna be amazing my first like probably up until like the the end of last year did I start feeling like my content was actually like good um, and I would already been posting for like a year at that point so it's gonna be like trial and error and a lot of it I think the biggest piece of advice I want to get out of the way right now is like you just have to do it um, I think a lot of people think there's this like magical trick to YouTube and there's not it's it's you have to be able to film yourself and upload it and that's like really all you have to do like <laughs> biggest tip number one but if you want to feel comfortable in front of a camera I think just practicing like you don't have to upload every video that you film you can film videos practicing when I used to do my makeup before I even had like a camera or anything or even thought about doing YouTube I would do my makeup and pretend like do like a spoof on a tutorial um, and so I would be talking while I was doing my makeup and I think just it sounds weird but like talking to yourself being able to have a conversation with yourself out loud like physically if you're in your car and you're bored you have a conversation with yourself about something you would want just talking out loud to yourself because that's all this is you're just recording it too so that would be a good way just practice like that's the best way to get comfortable in front of a camera what are some good tips on editing I feel like I got filming down but editing stumps me I have a lot of editing tips I think I might do a whole video on how I edit on Final Cut Pro and just some different things that I do if you guys would want to see that let me know if any youtubers like want to know how I edit and certain little tricks that I do my biggest advice while editing though is don't let there be too many silences. I can tell somebody is newer to YouTube or whatever if there's a lot of silences. So if there's a lot of like long awkward pauses or if they say something and then they're like um and then there's a pause for like four seconds. I cut all of that out. Anything that's longer than two seconds of a pause I cut. Um, and I think that's also like stylistic choice because I think some people like to have less jump cuts because they like it to be more organic. In my opinion I like things that are a little bit more fast paced. YouTube as a whole is fast paced. Um, audience retention is really important so having your audience want to stay on the video and having your watch time be high for a particular video is really important so I think having those long spaces in my opinion makes people not necessarily want to continue to watch for like the watch time of a video I think it's all about style and playing around with things and googling things too like if you want to learn how to do like a zoom in 
on your specific editing pro it's called the Ken Burns if you want to learn how to do that on your specific editing program Google it um, and that's what I did I all of my cool editing I guess it's not really that cool none of my editing is super revolutionary but everything I know how to do on my editing software is because I just googled it like my little title screen that you see at the beginning the smoky glow thing I literally just googled how to make that and then I did um, so I think a lot of it is just having the patience to learn your specific editing software and having the patience to Google things and try to figure things out and also I would say this the large spaces just cut it down I think being more concise is better a lot of the times what is a good editing software if I'm willing to pay like $15 a month so I know that you can get most computers come with some sort of editing software um some of them are good and some of them i've not liked i used imovie obviously that's what i had before i got final cut and i invested in final cut i liked imovie i prefer final cut i think if you're making the money to make the investment worth it getting final cut if you have a mac is definitely worth it i've my life has been exponentially better since i got final cut pro so <laughs> that's just a me thing everything processes faster it works faster it doesn't crash as much like it's definitely got its kinks too final cut has its own issues but like it's much better than iMovie. The free editing software that you have on your computer will probably suffice until you actually start making the money to put return investment in, unless you have the money. So if you have like $15 a month, I've heard Philomora Wondershare. That's what um, my friend Lacey uses, and she really loves it. She says it's really good, and she really enjoys it. So I've heard really good things about that one too. But as far as me, I've only used stuff that's like for the Mac, or I tried Windows Movie Maker a couple times, and I absolutely, because <laughs> I almost wasn't going to get a Mac. I was almost going to get like a, P a Windows, just because I've heard they're better computers as a whole and so I played around with the Windows Movie Maker and I hated it and so I just couldn't figure it out and so I went with the Mac just because for creating stuff Macs even though they're ridiculously expensive uh, Macs are really good if you're trying to create any type of content so and pro tip if you are gonna go with a Mac and you want to get Final Cut Pro and you're like really investing in this um, you can get this thing called if you're like a student you can just say you're a student too like they won't they're not gonna question you. They didn't even ask me for a student ID. But if you go in and you say you want like Final Cut, you can get this thing called the Pro Apps Bundle, and that would be it's a hundred. I think it's one hundred ninety nine dollars, which Final Cut is two hundred ninety nine dollars. So it's one hundred ninety nine dollars, and you get all of their like logic making stuff. So you get their like photo editing, best uh, video editing, which is Final Cut. You get like Logic Pro, which is for music. Um, so I would recommend doing the Pro Apps Bundle because it's a hundred dollars cheaper, and you get like five times. The amount of stuff if, and it's a college student deal but like it's a really good deal i don't know if that made sense but i'll like try to like link something down below about it because it's a really good deal and honestly the guy at the mac store didn't even ask for an id he was like are you a student and i was like yeah i am but like you could lie <laughs> get that deal you know what i mean like get those savings how did you create your setup starting out and how has it evolved so my setup when i first started out i used my phone for my first couple of videos i had the google pixel one and i used that for the first couple of videos and i had an editing thing on my phone um, that I was using and then but I couldn't even edit on it <laughs> I could only like shorten the beginning and shorten the end so the whole thing is just one continuous video and I could only record on the phone for 30 minutes um, so that was a mess and then I decided to start recording on my laptop camera which was pretty bad quality and I had this desk lamp that's behind me but it worked I mean I made I I got my first 2000 2,500. I think I got my first 2,500 subscribers with my MacBook and my desk lamp. So, I mean, it, it worked for me. I think if, you know, people can look past not the best quality if you have something good to say. Um, and then I ended up upgrading to a camcorder. I'll put a picture of the one I have that's right here. And I bought a ring light. Um, and those things were like not huge investments. They weren't like crazy amounts of money. I still went pretty cheap with everything. Um, and then as of recently, the biggest things I've upgraded on, I upgraded right before Glomus because I hit, I think I hit like 12,000 subscribers and I just, or 11,000. I hit like 11,000. I was above 10,000 and I was like, I should be investing in this a little bit more. So I ended up getting two box lights, which is what are on right now, which I do want to upgrade my lighting when I get to my new house. Um, just because this lighting is okay, but it makes it really, I don't know why it does this, but it makes it so when I'm sitting in front of my camera, behind me is like very dark. It's not like that right now, but if I'm sitting at my normal film, filming setup at my desk, these lights, like I'm not a fan. But I think again, if you're just starting out, I mean the box lights cost me like 50 bucks. Like they were not expensive. And the biggest things I've invested in are my camera, which I got this during Black Friday. And it was, it was a lot. I mean, it was a lot more than I ever thought I would spend on a camera, but it's been a great investment too, just because now I have this amazing camera that's like awesome. 
and I love it. Um, so this has been really cool to have this camera. And I have the Canon EOS Rebel, uh, the two SL, the SL2, sorry, I'm reading it off the camera. Um, but I love this camera and I have just like a normal 18 millimeter lens. It's like, it came with the camera. I didn't buy any crazy lenses. That is something I want to invest in in the future. But again, that's like the future. And then the other big thing I invested in was my computer, my desktop computer and Final Cut Pro, the editing software that I use. And I invested in those because having a laptop didn't give me the capability to export mass amounts of videos and like do crazy things. Um, and that was difficult, especially when I was doing Glomus and when I do Glomus and for how much I upload, I needed something that was faster. And so that's why I got this. So, and I use this for school too. This has like multi-purpose. It wasn't just for YouTube, but a big leading factor for me getting a desktop was for YouTube. So I've invested quite a bit into my channel as far as equipment and stuff, but I don't think that's like a necessity. That's just how I've evolved and how I'm gonna continue to evolve. But that's just because I want my videos to be really good quality. I don't think that's, like I said, like I had a really, <laughs> crappy camera for I got to 10,000 with like a little camcorder so like don't feel like you have to go out and buy a $600 camera to make everything work for you because you don't you absolutely don't how did your friends react when you started becoming bigger on YouTube and I got another question too that was about what do you do if like you're you're nervous about your friends finding out and like making fun of you I'm very lucky that I have a really supportive group of people who and also I've always been a little bit <laughs> out there. Um, I've always been a little like extra. I always kind of do the things that everyone is like, why are you doing that? Um, but I've always gotten support for it from my friends and my family and my boyfriend. And so when I started doing YouTube, I mean, I didn't really tell anyone at first because it, it nothing came from it. Like I got like 10 views on a video. I think I told Charles is, I think one of the first people I told besides my family and Charles was like his brother. And I had like 12 subscribers and I was like, do you want to subscribe? <laughs> So he was like an OG subscriber um, and then my friends all subscribed when I told them and I, I because of them I had like 20 subscribers and then when it started to get bigger I mean my friends were all really supportive of it. They still are. I mean they're always really excited for me when bigger things happen or if I get like shout outs or if a video does really well or if you know, I have some really exciting stuff happening that I've gotten to tell them about and they're really excited for me. And I'm just really lucky to have like friends and family and a boyfriend who genuinely like support me in this and are excited for me. And also with Charles, like he was so down from the get, my boyfriend was just so down from the start to like be on camera and like do stuff with, even, even when no one was watching, like do camera stuff with me, do videos with me. Like he loves it. He loves that I have this hobby. And I think at the end of the day, like, if your friends are mean to you because you started a YouTube channel that you're like excited about, they're not really great friends. <laughs> I hate to say it, but like that's kind of a rude thing to be. I think it's something that's so fun and can be really cool. And I don't think anybody should be nervous about what other people think about it. I mean, I get nervous sometimes because I know people from like my hometown know about my videos and that can sometimes make me a little nervous. But at the same time, it's like, well, no, because I mean, it's fun. I'm doing it for fun. It's a fun thing. I enjoy doing it. I like doing it. I feel like you just gotta like not care because <laughs> I think that goes along with the other part of being on YouTube which is just like literally not caring what other people think because people are gonna have opinions and sometimes they're gonna be unfavorable and I think you just have to like know yourself know who you are know your what you're doing like why you're doing YouTube like you're doing it to have fun and then if people are angry about that or give you crap about that like that's their problem it's absolutely not your problem to deal with in my opinion this is the last one I'm gonna answer this is what is one of the best ways to get visibility so you can build an audience um I think I think the best way to build an audience, and I, this might sound weird because I think in a way, if you wanna do YouTube just for fun and you don't really care about like subscriber, I think you can just do whatever you want. And I think a lot of people do that. I know a lot of people love their channels and love having fun with it. And for me, that's kind of how I started. And then I kind of saw what happened with me personally, like if you wanna know my, the way I got to where I am now was, which is still very micro person, but I'm not trying to be like, oh, I know, I know the secret. There is no secret. Um, but I think for me what happened was I noticed I was doing it and I was just doing it for fun and I was just doing videos that I thought would be funny and cool um, and then I noticed that there was a gap in the drama community where I felt like there wasn't, there was the tea channels and the drama channels that were like really spilling the tea, like investigating, doing all the receipts, like all of that. And then there was commentary channels that would talk about it. Um, but there wasn't a ton of like 
middle ground people who talked about the tea and like delivered tea while also giving commentary on it like a, a kind of in-depth analysis of it and there were channels like that but I definitely felt like I saw a hole so I was like well I could I could I didn't I, didn't, I never I was never like I'm gonna fill that hole but like I was just kind of like subconsciously like oh like that's kind of content that I would like to make like I would like to be able to talk about tea but also give it a commentary type twist like I would love to do that and so I just tried it and it went really well um so I think a big part of like growing an audience is finding almost like a niche and then working your way up through it you know what I mean like I found that kind of niche where I had a different type of voice and I used that to my advantage and I think every individual person has something that is unique about them I think a big part about YouTube if you want to grow and do all of that stuff I think a big part of it is finding that thing that's unique to you and then using it in the best way you can to work to grow and I also think I don't recommend this because <laughs> I think this is like a dicey game I think I think it's good to have diverse content um, I think it's good to have different things that you're offering people I know a lot of people say that that's not really the way to go but I think when you're first starting your channel you're in a super unique and cool position to do literally whatever you want like you're in a unique position where like nobody's really watching you so you can just do whatever so I think for me when you're first starting is this is the time to like experiment with with content to play around with because I was like well I want to be a makeup channel but I also want to talk about things and then I was like why am I not doing both like why do I have to pick one and that's what I've been doing um and I would I like to think that I've done a good job at that so I think a lot of it is like don't be afraid don't like put yourself in a box so early on don't feel like you have to make one type of content like I like to do the knitting videos we do like the, the mukbangs and like the cooking videos and like me and my boyfriend like to do videos together I like to make certain videos like the trying to look like an Instagram model videos like I, I want to try vlogging a little bit more you're at such a privileged place where like bigger creators who are really established who have gotten their way through on like one specific thing they're kind of boxed in now and that's the kind of content they can create whereas like you being smaller and just starting you have the opportunity to completely make something brand new and completely completely diversify content and I think that's a really unique and cool thing about being a small creator and being so even if you have one subscriber you're a small creator so I think that's a really cool thing about the small creator community as a whole so you really have a lot more freedom to do whatever you want so the first tip we'll get into the tips now the first tip that I had was this I know this might sound a little harsh but I want to be honest it's to set reasonable goals for yourself I think a lot of people come in and they're like I'm gonna get a million subscribers in a year and it's like okay like you could definitely and I think it's good to aim big um but I think then when they don't hit that or they don't hit like a certain amount of subscribers in like a month and they're uploading consistently and they're not hitting their goals I think people can get discouraged um growing on YouTube is really hard because you have to hit the algorithm and you really it's a lot about a lot of it is luck you have to get into the algorithm at the right time uh when they're pushing your content like it's all very algor algor algorithm algorithmic algorithmic there we go it's all very algorithmic algorithmic what is wrong with me? It's all very algorithmic and you have to really, like it's a lot of it's luck. So I think to be able to say like, okay, by this time next year, like I wanna have a hundred subscribers. And I know that may seem small, but it's it's not like for a lot of people. And that's actually like a big number. Think of a hundred people in a room, like that's still good. You don't have to have a million subscribers to consider yourself like successful on YouTube. So I think just setting realistic goals and it goes the same thing with upload schedules. I see a lot of people that get really frustrated and they kind of give up because they can't keep a consistent upload schedule and I think my biggest advice is set an upload schedule that you're not where you're not setting yourself up to fail if you're say if you work like 60 hours a week and you go to school and you have a kid you're probably not gonna have time to upload four to five times a week like that's not gonna happen for you pick like every once in a week don't overexert yourself forcing yourself to upload this content because at the end of the day it's supposed to be fun that's like the major reason people do YouTube is because it's fun and also that way if you don't upload like you miss one of the three times you were supposed to upload that week you're gonna get mad at yourself and you're gonna get frustrated with the process and you're gonna think that like that's the reason you're not doing well or you're gonna like self-doubt yourself so I think to set an upload schedule that actually is plausible for you is such a big thing I see so many people get burnt out and upset because they can't keep a consistent upload schedule sometimes it can't be consistent when I first started uploading I uploaded like every three months <laughs> I was so bad at it and then you just kind of like fall into it you know what I mean don't stress yourself out about the upload schedule it'll be fine the other thing I wanted to point out 
is there are things you can do to monetize yourself before actually getting monetized on YouTube. Um, a lot of people know about Patreon. I am sus about Patreon for large creators because I'm aware a little bit of how much larger creators make. And so I think it's weird that people with 8 million subscribers are using like the join feature in Patreon because I know how much money they're making and they don't need to be taking it from their children fans. But other than that, like if you're a smaller creator and you have a core group of people that really support you, I see nothing wrong with using Patreon to get a start like when you're not getting monetized already. Get a start with getting a new camera, you know, saving up to buy new lights, saving up to invest into your channel. I see no problem with Patreon. And there's also things like Magic Links, which is a referral link website where basically like you sign up I use it I've used it for the past like year and a half I think and it's not like you're not gonna make bank but like over the past year and a half I've made a good amount of money just linking the products that I used on my face down below and I earn like a 2% commission the only thing is you have to be honest when you do stuff like that so don't use magic links and like not say anything about it like make sure you have it clearly disclosed in your description box that all of those links are affiliated so that people can be smart because then you're just gonna lose trust and then nobody's gonna want to support you anyway but there are ways to like monetize yourself earlier on to get money to put into the YouTube channel before you're actually able to get AdSense and the next tip I would have is ask questions. If you have a question, Google it. Ask someone. Google some creators. Like not every single creator is going to respond to you, but like most some of them will. Like Google something. Ask the question. Don't just like say like, oh, I don't know. Like I know a lot of people are like, well, I don't know how to put mid-roll ads in my video. So those of you that don't know, once you're monetized, if a video is over 10 minutes long, you can put ads in the middle of the video so that way you can earn more ad revenue. And I know a lot of people that are like, well, I don't know how to do that, so I'm just not going to. <laughs> and it kills me. I'm like, Google it. <laughs> Google it because it makes a difference like even just putting one mid-roll ad in makes a huge difference in your AdSense money it's money it's money lost at this point for you and I think especially with videos that are long like you put a lot of time into that you should be compensated for that if you can um, I think if people and it's just because people are too scared to like ask a question or look into it making thumbnails like Google stuff you know Google tutorials on how to make YouTube thumbnails figure out a style that works for you I used to have thumbnails that were all over the place and didn't have a theme and were crazy and then I looked up a video on like what people like to see on channels and I fixed them I changed them a little bit I think stuff like that is definitely really important so make sure you're like not just being like oh I don't know and then leaving it like if you have a question about how the process works google it or ask someone or try and figure it out the best you can because I think that's really important all right my last piece of advice before I go this one is a little strange I guess but this is like take every opportunity but still be wary when you're very small companies like to reach out and be like we have this teeth whitening kit and if you sell it for us we'll give you $25 and it sounds tempting but you don't want to take opportunities that are going to later like screw you over do your adequate research even if your audience is small like micro do your research. You owe it to the people that subscribe to you to do your research and do your due diligence. For example, I didn't. So when I had like four, I think it was just under 5,000 subscribers, I did a freaking one of those teamy blend teas that were like the diarrhea teas and I was like I, th I didn't I didn't look into it at all I was like oh they want to send me tea that's so cool I'm gonna take that opportunity because I wasn't getting a ton because I was so small and now I look back and I hate that <laughs> I hate that there's ever a video of me promoting that because I didn't do my due diligence um, so I think it's really important to make sure that you do your due diligence you look into everything but still be open to taking opportunities opportunities can be really great make friends like DM creators that you think are cool and that you like see if they want to like hang out I've met so many great friends on YouTube just by DMing them and being like I love your content like your content is so great I've met great people that way ask people to collab you know like find people around your size find people bigger find people smaller find people whose content you like and be like do you want to collab do you want to do something cross promote on each other's channels take those opportunities because they are a really really good way to help grow your channel and to help get you like a a board. What am I? 
a diving board. It's a diving board into YouTube. So I think that's everything though. <laughs> that's all my ideas. Thank you guys so much to anyone who asked questions and thank you guys for listening to this video. I hope it wasn't too boring. Um, I hope it was useful for my content creators um, out there who want to get started or care. Um, happy 4th of July. On honor of 4th of July, if you could do me a huge favor on this lovely 4th of July and if you're not, please go register to vote. I'm going to be linking the description down below. Uh, voting registration is going to come up sooner than you think. The deadline's going to pass and soon you won't be able to vote in the next election. And this next election is very important. So I'm going to link that down below and if you guys want to show your patriotism to this country, uh, please go register to vote. <laughs> Please. I hope you guys like this video. If you did, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither. Honestly, just so happy you're here watching me, my merch, my social media, and everything I'm wearing on my face will be linked down below. And yeah, I love you guys so, so much, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!